Hey gang, this is Ron from ITMasterKey.com and my job is to help you guys get certified. In this video, we're going to go over what you need to know for the 1002 exam. So if you've never done a practice test with me before, what we do is we go through some questions together as a family and then I pretty much break down why each answer is the correct answer. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. I would appreciate it if you guys would thumbs up this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and share with anybody who can benefit from it. All right. Let me see. Which way does this look the best? I think it looks the best this way, I'm going to say. All right. So... Um, which command sends packets to devices to see if the device is reachable across the network? Is it tracert, ping, DNS lookup, or IP config? So hopefully you guys picked ping. So ping is a utility that allows you to see if things are reachable across the network. It lets you know if you have connectivity with that device all right next up trace route traces the route packets take as they traverse through the network if tracer determines it takes 12 routers for a packet to reach its destination how many hops did that packet take to arrive at that destination while you guys think about that All right, so when we're talking about networking, when we're talking about routers, every router is called a hop. So if it takes 12 routers to get to a destination, it's going to take 12 hops. Let's check and make sure that that's right. Bam, we got it right. Good. All right, this command provides information and statistics about protocols in use in current TCP IP network connections, which of these commands does that so these commands can be entered inside of the command line so you just go to start type cmd bring up the command line and then if you type this command it's going to tell you about the tcp ip network connections and statistics about certain protocols netstat is what would allow you to do this netstat is what would allow you to do that. All right, so Willie is using the blank command, which can be used to verify and replace important Windows system files. What can do that? All right, hopefully you guys picked SFC. So I think it's SFC. Let's see if I'm right. Bam. Too easy. So um, this is the first thing that we ran across that has acronyms. Just remember that on the actual exam, there are going to be a lot of acronyms. And that's one of the things that trip up a lot of students is that the acronyms, if you don't know what they stand for, it's kind of rough. It can be kind of hard to actually pass the exam if you don't know what the hell stuff stands for. Right. So SFC is the system file checker. All right, Gino wants to see a report that displays what group policy objects are applied to a user and computer. What command line tool would allow him to do so? Remember, all these things can be entered uh, in a Windows machine. Uh, you just go to CMD, type that command, and then uh, whatever you wanted it to do, it will do. So I'm going to say GP result. I think that is the answer. So GP result um, shows you uh, what's been applied in the group policy. So GP stands for group policy. Makes sense? All right. What's the difference between X copy and RoboCopy? What is the difference between X copy and RoboCopy? 
again, when you're actually inside of, actually, I'll let you guys figure this part out, and then I'll uh, say what I was about to say. All right, hopefully you guys picked this. Hopefully you guys picked that. So um, the most important difference is that RoboCopy will usually retry when errors occurs, while XCopy will not. In most cases, that makes RoboCopy far more suitable for use in a script. All right, so um, I'm kind of going a little bit quicker than I usually do because I'm on a tight schedule. That's why I kind of keep looking over. But I just wanted to make sure that while I had a little bit of time, I provided you guys some value. So we've been going through these different questions. Just remember, when you actually take the exam, if you're looking at this, most likely you've already taken a thousand and one. If you haven't, you don't have to take it in order, but most people take a core one first and then they move over to this. Just remember that it's not going to be an exact order, right? It's not going to be exactly the way the exam objectives are set up. It's going to be just random stuff throughout the whole uh, shebang bang. Okay. All right. So what are two ways a partition can be created? What are two ways that a partition can be created. So the two different ways that you create a create a partition is one is um, the disk part command. The other way is through disk management. Let's see if I'm right. Awesome. So you can either use a disk part command through the command line or you can go through uh, disk management. Now, uh, one caveat that I always put to you guys is that this isn't quite enough to pass the exam, but it's just something to uh, show you how to uh, think a little bit deeper and ways to decipher information very quickly. So uh, partition, simply put, is something that just separates different files and different drives. So a partition is just like uh, if you're in a limousine and you have a partition, the driver is in the front, the uh, passengers are in the back. And if you want to separate that, you can roll up the window, which is called a partition. All right. Of the following, which correlates to tabs found inside of MS config? What do we think? So I want to say the tabs that are in the MS config tab, the two that will correlate, I think, is startup and services. I don't think those other ones are on there. Perfect. Great. All right, Jamil wants to add the Active Directory snap in to his device. He has looked all over and can't quite seem to figure out how to add the snap in. Where should he navigate to? to add the snap in it's too many words of <laughs> this question I, I don't know why it says all that but that's what it says at the bottom where should he navigate to add the snap in y'all know what the hell they was trying to say all right so you should go to uh mmc the microsoft management console to add snap in let's see if i'm right all right great so another question you guys may ask is where are these questions coming from? So um, all these questions are coming from the A plus portion of the zero to hero program. So this is kind of towards the end. This is actually supplemental to the training. I right, just got a bunch of questions to kind of, you know, help uh, my guys and my girls out. All right. So um, Jasmine thinks a virus may have changed some settings in the registry after she successfully removes the virus that's instead of instead of viruses says various how can she check the registry so if she successfully removes the virus how can she check the registry I'm going to say the reg edit command. Let's see if I'm right. Bam, reg edit command. Easy, easy, easy. All right. What does the below statement best describe? The process of consolidating fragmented files on a user's hard drive. What is that called? 
too easy. So defragmentation. Defragmentation is the a process of consolidating files because after you open up files a certain amount of times, they get fragmented, they get broken, they get uh, put in different places. A lot of operating systems now do this automatically or some even operating systems uh, like solid state drives, you don't need to defragment them. So um, that is the answer to this question. So gang, uh, had a little bit of time, literally told you I was on a, a time crunch. Hopefully this provided value to you. Make sure that you drop a like and a comment and watch the video that is going to be somewhere around here. One of my previous videos that could help you as well. Once again, like I said, uh, the cost of admission for this stuff is just a like, a comment, and to subscribe. Uh, other than that, I'll see you in class.